Welcome to this introduction to the Smart Data System for cardholders. This video will cover the essential topics you need to get started with Smart Data, including completion of the self-registration process to gain access to the system. Once logged in, you'll then learn how to perform essential cardholder tasks, such as reviewing details of transactions, coding them for accounting purposes, attaching receipts, splitting transactions, and submitting your transactions for approval. Along with your physical card, you'll also receive an email from either your company administrator or First Interstate containing a link to the Smart Data sign-in page, which is shown here. Beneath the sign-in button, you'll click the Cardholder Self-Registration link, then enter the 16-digit account number listed on the credit card, as well as the company registration code provided by First Interstate. With that information entered, click the Next button and a step-by-step -step account setup guide will open where you'll complete the remaining steps of the self-registration process that include creating a username, password, and a security question. With your credentials created, return to the sign-in page and use them to access the system. The home screen contains several useful sections. At the top are two tabs labeled Account Activity and Reports that allow you to navigate to different screens within the system. On the right side is the Resource section that contains links to guides and online help. In addition, First Interstate will provide a customized user guide containing more specific information as a complement to these standard resources. The body of the home screen contains several panels that provide a summary of your card activity, report links, and a listing of the most recent transactions. Further down is a snapshots section that provides a breakdown of spending and the total current spend for your card. This snapshots section can be customized with different graphs by using the gear icons. To view more transactions than just those listed here, you can navigate to the transaction summary. This will display a search criteria menu where you can search by a specific date range or a predefined reporting cycle. If you choose a predefined reporting cycle, the specific begin and end dates will appear for reference. In the results that are returned below, there are icons on both the left and right sides that provide the ability to perform distinct functions such as drilling into more detailed information, attaching a receipt, or even splitting the transaction. Hovering over each of the icons provides a tooltip identifying its purpose. Clicking the first icon on the left provides details of the transaction, including the processing date, billing date, amount, currency, and more. To go back to the transaction list, Use the breadcrumb trail at the top of the screen. Let's now look at how to attach a receipt to a transaction. First, locate the transaction in the list, then click the Add Receipt icon on the far right. A pop-up appears where you'll click the Browse button to locate the receipt, and the supported file types are listed here for reference. With the receipt located and selected, Click the Add button and it will be attached to the transaction. Now the function of the icon has changed from Add Receipt to View Receipt and clicking on it will allow you to view, download, or delete the receipt. This way you can verify that the correct receipt is attached and, if not, delete it and add the correct one. Now that we've reviewed the details of the transaction and attached a receipt, Let's look at how to code it to ensure that the expense gets allocated correctly. Begin on the left side by clicking the Accounting Detail icon, which is the arrow that will provide fields where you can enter a description and make selections from the Fund, Expense Code, Cost Center, and Project Code fields. Make the selections from each field that are appropriate for this transaction. And please note that the values in these fields will be unique to your organization. With the selections complete, you can now check the Reviewed box to mark the transaction reviewed and then save the changes. This will lock the transaction and prevent further editing. 
Should that be necessary, you must contact your approver who can unlock it, and this can be done via the email button, which opens a message window where you can enter your message. To streamline this process for further situations in the future, check the Save for Future Use box. At times, it may be necessary to split a transaction to allocate different portions of the charge to separate expense categories. To do this, begin by clicking the split icon on the left, which opens the split transaction screen. Receipts can also be added on the screen using the add receipt icon on the left. Below that, you'll determine if the transaction will be split by amount or by percentage, as well as the number of parts the transaction will be split into. Enter that number, then click the add splits button. Once the split is applied, you'll see the new parts of the transaction, each with its own description field, which can be edited. Initially, the amount is split evenly between all the new parts, and each one can be edited as necessary. To further edit each split for coding, click the Save button in the upper right. Now each split has an accounting detail button that, when clicked, shows the fields where you can make selections from the fund, expense code, cost center, and project code fields. Once again, the values in these fields will be unique to your organization. Please note that accounting codes can only be edited for one split at a time. So to edit the accounting codes for the other split, click its Edit Accounting Codes button and make the appropriate selections. With each split edited, click the Save button again. Then return to the transaction list using the breadcrumb trail where you can mark it as reviewed and then click Save to send it for approval. If you have any questions about Smart Data, please contact us via telephone at 406-255-5434 or email us at credit cards at fib.com.